Hello, everyone. This is a, a brief lecture on the history and theory of ligamentous articular strain. Um, LAS, we call it for short, is how Dr. Sutherland, who is known for osteopathy in the cranial field, how he treated the rest of the body. The origins of LAS, apparently Dr. Still used many different types of indirect techniques, um, which at the time he referred to traction techniques. Um, as they were reported to uh, patients and students who had the privilege of working with him. These ideas were originally documented and came together as a group of techniques known as ligaments articular strain. Uh, they come from a 1949 article by Dr. Lippincott, uh, doctors Lippincott, husband and wife, osteopathic physicians, um, uh, kept this alive. And this was the osteopathic technique of William Garner Sutherland, not the cranial. This is other things that he did. And this was based on some other types of treatments that Dr. Sutherland did, Dr. Sutherland being a student of Dr. Still. So these are other techniques that we know came from Still. Uh, these, were, these techniques were kept alive and popularized by the Dallas Osteopathic Study Group in 1963. And these were all students of Dr. Sutherland. Uh, was formed originally by Roland Becker, Alan Becker, and Dr. Fulford, uh, all of them osteopathic physicians. And they founded this group to keep this body of work alive, uh, these indirect techniques. Uh, the theory is quite simple, actually. Uh, the theory is a couple of rules. The techniques uh, do not always follow the theory, but this is the theory. In other words, what you need to understand is there's a set of techniques that they kept alive. Then they went back and said, what is the common theme that we can try and say, here's what Dr. Still meant to do? Because Dr. Still did not teach this and say, now I'm doing ligamentous articular strain. That idea was labeled by other people afterwards. Dr. Still was very clear that the techniques, he was not teaching techniques per se, he wanted people to understand the anatomy and the physiology and what they wanted to change and that you could create any techniques needed to solve the problem. So he was not teaching per se, uh, now we're doing uh, you know, LAS, now we're doing high velocity and so on. So the theory for LAS techniques, which to do the actual techniques are um, a group of somewhat memorized uh, positions to use is that there's some sort of strain pattern that happens. And in this example here, I'm giving an example of a stress put on the, uh, on the ligaments, a valgus stress. So if we take a valgus stress into the knee here, um, it, it creates a maladaptation. So we could say that the medial collateral ligament uh, in each one of these cases gets strained, and perhaps this adaptation is loosened. That's the theory, that there's some upset in the balance between the ligaments. They've been taken beyond their normal physiologic barrier and they found a new um, set point that is not appropriate. So the diagnosis with regard to LAS, it's in the manner of decreased motion. It's not um, an articular type of ad, uh, uh, diagnosis like you might have in spinal diagnosis. And further to this is that there will be decreased primary respiratory rhythm uh, through that area. Now, I just wanna be clear that if these techniques came from Dr. Still, for sure, we know he wasn't talking about primary respiratory rhythm because he wasn't doing cranial. Cranial came afterwards from Dr. Sutherland. So clearly the Dallas Osteopathic Study Group took these set of techniques or things they understood from Dr. Still, these principles, and they have overlaid other ideas onto it. So to be clear on that. So you can practice these techniques even if you don't palpate cranial rhythm, it's not necessary. But the dysfunctions are not being named for their spatial locations. Uh, it's not being named for the valgum or the varus so much as it is the strain on the ligaments. Um, LAS also considers history to be uh, key to discovering what, what happened to them, the history of how the injury happened. My own personal flavor on that is I don't view the body in that way because sometimes patients are not accurate in giving you the history. Or if you're given the history in a certain way, but you don't feel that in the tissues, then to me, that 
it doesn't exist if I can't feel it and palpate it. You're, you're working on a higher level if you can do things as you feel the dysfunction rather than applying a technique to an area of the body, hoping that the technique works. It is much better if the osteopath feels the dysfunction. So this, this is the principles here, again, just showing that in the idea of a valgus, um, this is uh, taking a force in here. These are stretched. Um, this is loosened. So our principles, which again, I'm not going to do applications in this very short video. I will do it in future videos. But the applications may not follow these principles, but these are the principles. And that is to disengage the area by either a gentle compre uh, uh, compression or a gentle distraction. So it's not massive amounts of force. It's very mild force. In this case, it's a mild force um, from above and below the area. The idea is that you will loosen the ligaments and allow some greater movement. Then it's followed by an exaggeration, meaning an increased valgum in this case. It doesn't, and again, these are mild exaggerations. They're not radical exaggerations. Uh, and then balance, a wait for, uh, in this case, a wait for the primary respiratory mechanism to facilitate the release for balanced ligamentous tension. That's what, um, these words come from the Dallas Osteopathic Study Group. And again, if you're not someone who palpates cranial rhythm, then I would say you can palpate a softening of the tissues, muscular release, or whatever criteria you're using for a release. So these were presented from Dr. Still, and they have been augmented by the Dallas Osteopathic Study Group. Um, and lastly, there's many people that make many claims about how Dr. Still treated based on very scant writings. And I wish to be clear about that. Dr. Still didn't write any books on techniques. He did make a few not notations that people have interpreted um, how he was working. But we know that he did do things that we call high velocity thrusting. Um, chiropractors call adjustment. Um, PTs may refer to it as mobilization. We know he did things like this. We know that he did soft tissue techniques, visceral techniques, lymphatic techniques, but he was not doing this in a time where he was selling seminars. In other words, if it's a seminar driven thing, then you say, well, this is my method. We do all these kinds of techniques. Dr. Still wanted people to understand the anatomy and physiology and the goal of what they were trying to create and, and move the body and touch the body in whatever way would best facilitate uh, bringing that back to its normal or as close to normal function. So um, I hope this is helpful. And this is a very short summation of the theory for LAS and more videos to follow. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like what we did, please subscribe to our channel.